In Pope Francis's writing about the joy of the gospel, he stated the following. I realize, of course, that joy is not expressed the same way at all times in life, especially at moments of great difficulty. Joy adapts and changes, but it always endures, even as a flicker of light born out of our personal certainty that when everything is said and done, we are infinitely loved. In our first reading today, we are told how Paul and Barnabas are filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. Joy is a hallmark of Christianity. Joy is the gift we all receive every Easter season, and we are still celebrating that today. The Easter season is 50 days long, as if the Catholic Church is reminding us to celebrate like Easter Sunday for several weeks. And just maybe, Maybe it is because we need a full 50 days to allow the joy of Jesus' resurrection time to sink into our souls. During my research into what Pope Francis said about joy, what resonated with me, and maybe with you, is that each one of us is going to have times of suffering, and sometimes they seem more than 50 days. The time of suffering may actually be more than 50 days, but Pope Francis says that joy is possible in every situation because it comes from the certainty that when all is said and done, each one of us is infinitely loved. Jesus tells us exactly that in our Gospel reading today. Jesus said, I know my sheep, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And I believe that Jesus tells each of us the most powerful lines in all the Gospels. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of my hand. The Father and I are one. Joy is absolutely certain that each one of us is loved. We are loved by God the Father, whose love cannot change, whose love can never let us down, ever. Jesus does not, at any time, promise an easy life, though. He does not say, you will never have problems, Jesus does not promise us success as our world defines success. What he does promise us is that no one can take us out of his hand or out of his love. He is one with God the Father, and God the Father is one with him. And in Jesus, we are safe and saved. In Jesus, each one of us is loved unconditionally forever and ever and always. This is what Jesus is telling each of us in today's gospel. Joy is the certainty of being infinitely loved by God. In the book, A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23, the author, Philip Keller, shares the following example. He states, when he started as a shepherd in the Rocky Mountains, He was unaware of the many dangers his sheep faced from predators. One morning, he found that cougars had killed nine of his sheep. From that day on, he slept with a rifle and a flashlight next to his bed. As he goes on to describe it, at the least sound of the flock being disturbed, I would leap from my bed and calling my faithful collie, dash out into the night, ready to protect my sheep. Over the course of time, I realized that nothing so quieted and reassured the sheep as to see me in the field. The sheep responded to the presence of their master, owner, and protector, 
and his figure put them at ease as nothing else could. Jesus tells each of us we are his sheep and that nothing can snatch us out of his hand. Jesus is always ready to protect us and lead us to a true life. That certainty of being infinitely loved by God the Father and Jesus is the source of our joy. Jesus goes on to explain that no one can snatch us out of his hand. However, each of us is free to jump from his hand as we have the choice of free will. I know for myself that little by little we can drift away from Jesus. The cares and concerns of everyday life can get in our way and can get to each one of us. Each of us gets tired and preoccupied, failing to remember that everything we have and have received is a gift from God. Socrates famously said that an unexamined life is not worth living. Our church founders have taken this universal wisdom and frequently proposed a daily examination of conscience to help us remain in the hands of Jesus. As a matter of fact, St. Ignatius of Loyola told the early Jesuits that even if they omitted all the other daily prayers, they must not drop the daily examination of conscience. So given that fact, I would like to challenge each of you each day this week to engage in a 10-minute examination prayer. This is a very easy way to start the beginning of your day. First, remind yourself that you are in the presence of God and that you are his. Secondly, you need to give thanks to God. Pick a few things from the day before which you are especially grateful for. For example, your family, your friends, the nice weather, the game last night, and so on. Thirdly, prayerfully review your thoughts and actions from the previous day. Where was God trying to lead you, and how did you respond to that call? Fourth, ask for forgiveness for where you have fallen short or turned the other way. Lastly, ask for God and Jesus' help to grow in their friendship. Think about that for a few moments. Isn't that how Jesus taught his disciples, you and me, to pray when he taught us the Our Father? So as we begin to prepare to receive Holy Communion, we will receive and take in Jesus into our own body. We receive his presence, his promises, his joy that no one could ever take away from us. We know that even as we receive him in the Eucharist, someday we are going to see him face to face forever in heaven. Can you only imagine that day and the immense joy you will have? I love that song, Can You Only Imagine? I can't sing, so I'm not going to sing it for you. I wish I could play it for you, but listen to it sometime. I would like to wish a blessed Mother's Day to all mothers, as well as those women who we look to as our surrogate mothers, who help to shape and make us who we are today. Mm -hmm. 